and we we are recording now. Thank you, Minister Armbrister. And those that have been with us, we going right back to our seven Gs. We started with uh, we started with growing, and uh, last last uh, lesson we talked about groups, how 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 groups operate, and today we're going to talk about uh, we're going to touch on grace today. Amen. Uh, and we we I pray that you have been taking notes and you can share this because it's been reported and that you uh, share it with somebody. You invite somebody to come on here with you. Uh, and if you don't invite nobody, we're still going to be here uh, teaching the word. the word of God. It's, it's the word. It's the word is what's needed. It's the word that's going to change our lives. It's the word that keeps us in order. It's the word that shows us how how we are protected. It, 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 Everything that we need is in the word, but the problem is, is we never want to read the word. And so we really don't know. A lot of stuff that we talk about, we talk about based on what somebody else has told us, but all we have to do is open the word and start reading the word for ourselves. So we're going to get started in grace. And in our bullet point, you see Minister Ambrister has it on your screen. It says, I agree to extend grace to others, understanding that I am the very recipient of God's daily kindness and mercy. And then it, it gives us uh, a Bible scripture, a Bible verse, uh, Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8 and 9. And Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, for it is by grace. Okay, you have before, you go into, before you go into the scripture, uh, Minister Mays, uh, in our... Um, quote for the word grace and our pledge for the word grace I would like you to implement the word God's grace daily kindness and mercy well, we have that I am the very recipient of God's grace daily kindness and mercy because when we dig into the lesson today, we're going to find out that grace covers the kindness and the mercy and the favor of God. So we don't want to exclude it from our pledge. Uh, this is simply our pledge where we're committing and in covenant agreement with MD 7 gs So we're going to add the word grace right behind God. Okay. Go ahead to our key scripture, Minister Mays. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, Amen. not by works, so that no one can boast. And, and, and so before we get into that, I'm going to go back. And grace simply means the unmerited favor Amen. of God, the mercy and compassionate. And when we go, look back at our bullet point, um, it says, I agree to extend grace to others. We never want to extend grace to others. Yes. We want grace extended to us, but we have a hard time. We struggle with extending grace into others. Uh, and then I like what Pastor pointed out at the end of the, the text, the, the printed text here uh, on our lesson, it says the very recipient of God's daily kindness and mercy. Yes. We're getting God's daily kindness and mercy every day, but how many of us are truly extending that same thing that God has given us uh, uh, to our fellow brothers and sisters? How many of us are really are really extending that grace, that 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 favor, that that kindness, and that mercy to others? Amen. One of the things we have to understand when we uh, look at the word grace itself mm -hmm. uh, and we go to our Bible dictionary, uh, one, of, one of my references Bible dictionaries, which is the New Belie Believer's Bible Gloss, it, terminology, it, it terms the word grace as the undeserved favor, forgiveness, and acceptance we receive from God through our acceptance of Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So grace is connected, first of all, it is an act of God's 
uh, favor and forgiveness that we does that we do not merit. And I think in order for us, first of all, to make a commitment and a covenant to extend grace to others, we must first understand the premise of God's grace in our life, what God has given us, because we cannot give what we do not have knowledge and understanding of. And so in order for us to be, uh, to extend this covenant grace that God has extended to us towards other, we must first be able to identify what grace is in regard to what God has given us. And there's common scriptures that we can go to where it shows the grace and the covenant of God. And we're gonna get, I'm sure Minister Mays has plenty of those pulled out and Minister Armbruster, and we'll cover some of those as we get farther down into the lesson. But I wanted us to understand that it is an undeserved favor. It is the undeserved favor because a lot of us think that God owes us what he's given us, Paul even made the statement in the New Testament covenant that how long should grace abide? And so that means that we can take God's favor and God's unmerited favor and, and misuse it. And so there is a time and a point when grace cuts and grace uh, is not given in a certain situation. I like the way the uh, new believer uh, translates it because it's due to us accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. You know, if we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, then it's one, grace is one of the benefits of uh, us receiving Christ because grace is not given unto man by our works. And we're gonna find that out as we give Father in the lesson. No one does anything to merit grace. It's just God's free will and free gift that he has given to us. Through the, Christ, through the cross of Calvary. And we're gonna see that as we get down into the what it benefits the believer under grace. Go ahead, Mr. So we, So we, we must understand, that Pastor just hit on it, we must understand that uh, we can never, there's not no work that you can do for this. Uh, it says in a text, it says that it's a gift of God. Right. So there's no way possible to work for something and be gifted for something at the same time. It says that it's the gift of God. And so, and there is folks that are thinking, that think that they can uh, uh, work their way to grace. They think that it's, it's by their works and it's not by your works. It, 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 it's, a, it's a gift of God. It's not by your works so that no one can boast. You don't have, God didn't want you to boast. That's why he gave it. He gave us the gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave us, he gave us our gift. And, and, and so you can't run around with, uh, and boast about uh, what you're doing because God gave that to us. And so we have to be mindful of that. But that same, uh, this, God gave it to us. But how many of us are truly extending uh, that same compassion, that same mercy? Uh, we want, like, like I open up with, we want it toward us. But we Amen. have a hard time extending it. Um, uh, you 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 want the uh, you want the preacher and the pastor to, to talk about grace and to extend grace unto you from the pulpit. But when it comes time from the pulpit, from from you to the pulpit, you don't extend grace. As soon as a pastor says something that you don't like, or or, or, or a preacher says something you don't like, you try to throw them under the bus. But you want that same grace extended back out to you. Amen. And, and if, if God has given us that same grace, that same mercy, uh, that same compassionate daily, as, as our bullet point says, then why, why are we having a hard time doing the same thing? Uh, we, 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 we have to stop taking everything so personal, understanding that even those ones that we are extending the grace and the kindness and the mercy to may not be extending it back to us at that particular time. They may not be at the same place that you are. They may not be at the same level that you are, but look at it. Remember that it's grace, it's unmerited favor. So we Amen. have to continue to give that to those people because eventually something uh, will, will change. But if we continue to act like them, then we going then they're not getting it. And so we, we get it from God. God gives it to us. And, and so we have a responsibility to extend that same grace onto our brothers and sisters. Amen. 
Colossians 4 and 6. You know, we're talking about talking to people uh, and how we respond to people. It says, let your speech always be with grace. Amen. Seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each other. Be careful how you talk to people. Amen. Be, be mindful how you talk to people. Understand that that grace, some, some folks are in a bad place. And you will find when you have that conversation with them, because you extended that conversation out of grace, you will find out that the whole scenario would change. All they needed was that word. All they needed was uh, uh, some love. All they needed was that compassion. Uh, but if we go to them and brawl beating them, then uh, we didn't have the problem at all. And we didn't extend that same grace that we say that God had given us. And, and, and we said that when in this commitment here, we said that we will extend it unto uh, the, look at this. I agree. I agree. It was personal. It says, I agree to extend grace to others. And so right. uh, we're talking about the seven G's of Christian growth. And so have you took that personal, that, that's personal. I agree to extend grace to others. And, you, and it says that you understand that you are the very recipient of God's daily kindness and mercy. Amen. As we look at those verses also, Minister Mays, it shows uh -huh. us that God's purpose in our redemption is not simply to rescue us from hell as great a work as it is, but his ultimate purpose is for our salvation. That through uh, this form of grace that the, the, the entire church will have eternity spent with God through this grace that he gives us. If you were to turn to Romans chapter three, verses 22, and I'm gonna jump, jump right down to verse 22, but you can start at the beginning of that chapter. Verse 22 says, this righteousness, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I justify freely by his grace through the redemption, now here it goes, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement. Through faith in his blood, he did this to demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance, he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it for a demonstration, for demonstration his justice as the present time, so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. So we were given this, uh, we were given this as the completion of what we could not do with works. God allowed his son to do uh, that gave us this grace that we are now afforded. And when we, when we think about the term grace, since we have not been saved by our works, then that means that we cannot be lost by our works as well. One of the things that we must understand, grace means salvation that completely comes apart from uh, what we merit. It simply works because through God, God did everything on Calvary Cross when Christ died for our sins. And so we in turn have been granted the gift of God, which is salvation, that we might share that gift with others as well. And that's where uh, Ephesians chapter two is referring to when he talks about faith. He talks about faith being included and the salvation that God has given us through the blood of Jesus Christ. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So it all connects together when we look at where we are in God. And we all operate in the manifestation of grace daily. For the Bible also tells us that we're no longer under the law, but we're under grace. And grace is that unmerited favor of God. So what do we do, Pastor Long, since we're under the unmerited favor of God, we no longer uh, operate by our works. So that gives me uh, 
an avenue of escape. No, it does not. Because in operating under the merit of God's works, then there's a requirement that we walk in the obedience to the word of God. There's a roadmap that has been laid out by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we are to follow. And if we have followed the roadmap that he has laid out, which is the word of God and the premise of God's word, because there's an ordinance that we conduct ourselves by as believers. And if we walk in that truth, then we become that part of the truth. And through this, people know that we are the disciples of God. He told God, the Father, he said, by this, they know that I am in you and you are in me. And when we when we take up the banner of being believers, then the same way the Father and the Son are one, we should be one with the Father and Son. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, Minister Mary. Grace. So Paul, Paul talks about grace in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 8 and 9. He talks about grace. He says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Well, in that part, he was talking about the thorn in his side mm -hmm. and, and the thorn in his flesh. And sometimes we must understand that even under this, even under, understand that sometimes that thorn in his side is just a reminder. It's just a reminder of, 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 of where you came from. But understand that even if you have a thorn in your side, because we all have one at some point or another, but understand that it's God that will give you the strength to get through uh, uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with. Because he says, concerning these things, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it may depart from me. But then mm -hmm. he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Amen. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than the power of Christ may rest upon me. Some mm -hmm. things in life, brothers and sisters, that you just have to go through. And then if you go down to 10, he says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Because he said, my grace is sufficient for you and for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Even when we one of the, thing, through, one, even one of the things we have to, and I want you to hold your thought, Minister Mays. One of the things we have to understand in the context of what Paul is referring to here is Christ speaking Himself, because as I foretold you, the grace of God was implemented through us through the redemption of Christ uh, on Calvary's cross, and so by Christ fulfilling all of our obligations and our sins on Calvary cross, then He affords us that sufficient grace that is there to get us through the weak moment, the weak moments. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. Yes. In other words, whatever you need, whatever, whatever you're going through, my grace is operating in your behalf. So don't get hung up on where you are, get hung up on the things that you have done, I have already uh, given, given my life for and surrendered to, praise God. And we, we walk under grace. Minister Mace, hold your thought right there because I want to give them this because it go ahead, goes go with that part. As believers, we operate under grace. Romans chapter 6, verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So everybody need to understand that in the Old Testament era, believers in the Old Testament era operated under the law, but in the New Testament era, in grace and truth, we operate under grace. And that grace is extended of, in Christ. Christ is that grace. Praise God. Let's go back right back to the verse that Minister May has just given us. Yes. Uh, when he talks about in 2 Corinthians, my grace. In other words, that grace that we're operating in is the grace of Christ. Okay. Yes. You see it right there, how the two band, band together. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Not his strength is perfect in weakness, because he said, the weakness is not in Christ, the weakness is in us. Nice. And everybody needs to understand that. My strength is made perfect, perfect in your weakness, is the way it should be uh, received as we receive it. Because Christ is not weak. He took on the burden that man could not took on. And that was to die for the sins of all men. 
He became that, that, that living sacrifice. Put on the flesh of man and yeah. showed us that we can too walk in the trueness of God and the fulfillment of God. So note that our all sufficiency in grace comes from God. We need to write that down. And you can find that in the scripture that Minister Mays gave us. And I encourage you to read beyond uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Really get into 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You're going to see the fullness of that grace and that all sufficiency that God gives us in that. Go ahead, Minister Mays. Amen. Yes, go go down. You can take it down a little further, but yeah, it's it's a it's a good lesson in here, and I and I like how it started up when Paul, uh, when Paul was talking and Paul was that saying, you know, he pleaded with the Lord three times that this may depart from him, and so no matter what you're going through, remember that his his grace is sufficient for us. You know, no matter no matter how bad it may look, his grace is sufficient for for you. Uh, his, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. Because there are times, brothers and sisters, I don't care what position, what title, uh, where you are in life, you will get weak. There will be some times, and that 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 you gonna understand uh, this grace is going to be sufficient for you. Because there are going to be some times that that when that when you get when God takes you through some things. You don't you you ain't gonna even understand it when you're going through, but after you get through it, you're gonna understand that you're gonna go back to this lesson and say, Hey, they were teaching this lesson on grace. And I remember that this grace that that, that he said his grace is sufficient uh, for us, that it, that, it, that, it, that it will get you through that same, but the same way that we uh, 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 that God have extended that grace to us and, and, and that compassion and that mercy to us, it's the same way that we have to start extending that same thing. Uh, to people uh, when we having conversations with them, uh, to people when we're going through, or even when we're going through, uh, we still have to be encouragers to somebody else because there's Amen. somebody else, uh, even when you think that you're having a bad day, I just told somebody this, even when you think you're having a bad day, when you talk to somebody else, you'll find out that their day is worse than yours. And, and, you, and you really understand, you can thank God because you can understand uh, Sister Keisha got on and said that, that that she was protected from the dog today. But Sister Keisha, there was somebody that got mauled by a dog today, and so we got to thank God that 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 it, he that you was covered. Amen. But you you can share that with somebody when you when you're talking to them and tell them the, about the goodness of God and, and how God had 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 done that. But then he tells us in the uh, Second Timothy one and nine when he said, "Who has saved us?" And called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. Amen. Which has given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Amen. The, the salvation, the holy calling, even in our very best works, is not wouldn't be enough. If you if you your, your very best still wouldn't be enough to cover this. Uh, Calvary was planned. Right. Uh, it said before time began, he said, he said it was given to us uh, uh, what the first Adam couldn't accomplish. The second Adam did. There you go. There and you and, go. and so the first Adam, the first Adam messed it up. He, he had it all. He messed it up and, and he took advantage and he disobedient and sin. And, and, and so the second Adam came and, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to make sure that this was going to happen because he, his own personal, uh, according to his own purpose, and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Amen. Praise God. Can I give him another scripture to go along oh, yeah. with that? And that oh, you, yeah. can, you, can, you can note this as the reception of a believer. We as believers receive grace. Look at uh, St. John chapter 1, verses 16. I'm going to start at verse 16, and I'll probably go down a couple verses. The New King James Version reads this way. It says, and for his fullness, we have all received. And grace for grace, praise God. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. So our grace is established 
and was fulfilled from grace, the grace of Calvary, to the grace that we operate in today. That's why it says, and for and grace for grace. The same grace of Calvary is the grace that we're operating in today. When we became believers, we became a we became a partaker in the death of Christ. So we became a partaker in the death of Christ. We became a recipient of the resurrection of Christ as well. Praise God. He said, those that suffer with me shall reign with me. Yes. And so we operate in the manifestation of his grace by being partakers and, uh, and believers in him and what he has done and fulfilling the purpose of God and the atonement for our sins. Go ahead, Minister Mays. Amen. Minister Ambrosia, you, 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 you want to jump in here? Um. Yes, um, there's something I could add. You know, when we, yeah, I'm really enjoying every, everything that's being said. It's really a fulfilling, um, a fulfilling lesson. But when we, you know, when we walk in and when we, re when we take the step to receive and to walk in the grace that God affords us and, and you know, to walk in that fullness, to walk in that trueness, as, as, as Pastor Long said, it, it reminds me that we could be in, in the same situation or similar situation as someone else, but the outcome of that situation and, 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 and the way we go through that situation to be totally different. Totally different. Amen. Because we're walking Amen. in it. And it Amen. reminded me of a story that I that I read in um in Tony Evans' illustrations. And I wanted to share that. And and the story, Amen. the story is this: he says, he says, one time. My wife and I were walking through the airport, something that mm -hmm. we, we all have done, right? Right. We were changing flights and we had to walk from one terminal to another. I got on the moving sidewalk, but she decided to just walk down the hallway without assistance. Yeah. So I'm walking down the moving sidewalk with ease because I'm walking in the spirit. In other yes. words, I was moving, but I was resting my weight on the moving sidewalk, which Amen. was carrying me forward, Amen. carrying me along. Amen. But she was walking in the flesh, yes. walking in her own human effort and her own ability. And with less effort, I covered more distance in a lot less time. She yes. was puffing and puffing, and I was relaxing. She was walking in the flesh. I was walking in the spirit. And so my progress was much greater than her progress. Hers was purely human effort, while mine yes. was resting on the movement of something else underneath me. That made me it's able to enjoy my progress, whereas she had to endure her progress. And, and, and that made me think about how... Wow. We can be in the spirit and we can yes. be walking under grace. And, and we got trials and tribulations and situations, and we, we don't feel like we're we're enduring something. We you know we feel like we're making progress through something. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going through it. I can go through it with grace. I can go through it with, with a sense of ease. I'm not enduring it. And, and, and it's just such a big difference to live life under the grace. That God affords us, then to keep things our own way. So I just wanted to share that because those those thoughts that come to mind. So thank you. Before we before we jump off of that, and I thank you for that illustration. One of the things that we want to take from Dr. Evans' uh, illustration that really affords all of us an evaluation, a personal evaluation, is him and his wife had the same opportunity. Yes, they were given the same opportunity. They both yeah. could have got on the 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 the. the uh, what is it, escalator or, or, or the moving uh, sidewalk? Yeah, the moving the moving sidewalk, and both of them could have been enjoying the same grace, but the choice was one. One made the choice to get on the sidewalk, get on grace, to operate in grace, to walk through grace, and the other one decided, well, I don't need grace right now. I'm going to walk on my own. So we have to con contemplate. That when that time comes for making that decision, yes, we can turn down the grace of God and choose to walk on our own. And when we do that, we suffer a consequence uh, for that choice that we make. And that's why we as the believers have this commitment and we make this commitment to let people know that there is a better way. That you can, you, you can go through what you're going through, but there's an easier way of going through it because we have all in Christ. Yes. If you were looking... The Bible even tells us to stand in grace. 
Go to Romans chapter five, and I'm gonna add this, and then I'm throwing it right back to you, Minister Mace, because this goes along with the scenario that Minister Ambrister has just given us. Romans chapter five, verses two through six. It's a good illustration of standing in grace. It says, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace which we stand. See, we are to stand in this grace. We're not, we're not just to walk by it. We're not supposed to take another road. We're supposed to stand in this grace. Praise God. And he said, rejoice and hope because grace gives us hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Now, this is what grace gives you because it's going to give you some bonuses. Dr. Evans told us he was able to just, just stand and just be floated alone. He didn't have to use his energy because grace took up the initiative to get him where he was trying to go without the effort uh, of being fatigued. Praise God. And he said, but we also glory in tribulation knowing that Tribulation produces perseverance. Here we go. And perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappear. Uh, I mean, now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Praise God. But when we were still with, uh, without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Praise God. So we can stand in that. We, we can stand in that hope no matter what we're going through, the tribulation. Everything that happens in our life is producing something positive as long as we stay in grace. Operate in grace. Praise God. As Minister Amber says, stay on, stay on the moving sidewalk. <laughs> Praise God. Why do we choose the hardest way to live when God has already gave us the easy way? And the easy way is only possible by casting our cares upon him because he cares for us. It say like you, we are to cast. It didn't say he take them, Minister Mays. That's right. It say we give them to him. And then when we give them to God, we got to stand back in that hope knowing that the outcome is going to work to our advantage. Because faith is right now. Right now. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1 said, now faith. That means it's activated right now. It's not a process to come. It's happening right now. We believe it. Amen. God That's bless it. you. That was a good illustration. Go ahead, yes, uh, Minister Mays. So since we have touched that, we're talking about the grace and, you know, um, we talk about how some people choose chose the, the 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 harder way of life when they didn't have to. Uh, there is even with grace, a like pastor said it earlier. There are still things that we have to do um, along the way, because the Bible tells us in First uh, Peter five and five says, "Likewise, you younger people, submit yourself to your elders." Yes. Amen. All of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humil humility. For God resists the proud, but yes, gives grace to the humble. There and, you go. And so there's there, there's some there's some submission there that has to happen. But he said God resists the proud. So uh, sometimes when Minister Ambrose was just talking about, sometimes we so proud uh, that we're walking on our own, that we're doing what we want to do. And, and Dr. Evans, uh, you know, was the he took the humble road. He said, "I'm gonna get on this thing, and yeah. this thing is made here. It's, it's I'm gonna take what God offered me. I'm right. gonna take what God offered me, and this there was the go. easiest way that I can take. And I'm gonna float on. And when time she gets there, I got to give her a drink of water. Uh, I didn't deserve she, it. I didn't deserve it. I did nothing it? to merit it. It was right. simply by the favor of God that it was presented for me to use." And I'm going to use it. How many times do we fail to use the th the gifts that God has given us? Come on, saints. We where oh, we yeah. are now because we pick up God last. We don't call yeah. him until we need him, until we get in trouble. Let's start this. Let, let's change this modem. If we rejoice in God now, when those times come, we already rejoicing. It's no reason to get sad. Yeah. Because the same God that's delivering us now is going to deliver us in sickness. Sickness shouldn't make us sad. That's a part of growth. 
He said, by my stripes are you healed. So if sickness come, I'm already healed. I can celebrate when the doctor give me a bad report because I know my outcome already is, is, is prepared. Praise God. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you yes. always having all sufficiency in all things. Praise God. Yes. All things mean all things. Everything that we need is already given to us. But how many of us are, 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 are waiting on God to do what's already done? Because we don't see it. We don't believe it. We don't manifest it. It's not spoken out of our mouth. Let your request be made known. Speak it out into the universe. If you believe in the healing power of God, then call these things that be not so as though they are. Use our voice to call things in the universe in the order. We were created in the image of God. And the Bible said in the book of Genesis, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God was a God that speaks out. Yes. Praise God. All he had to do was think the thought because he God. He showed us the premise of getting manifestation in the spoken realm. Somebody ought to hear me today. Yes, Lord. He spoke it out and it became in existence. He said, let there be light and there was light. Right. He divided the light from dark. He said, let the animals come forth. Praise God. Vegetations, he called it forth. He divided the light from darkness. He called the light day and the darkness he called night. He hung the moon and the stars. And then he said, let us make men in our image and after our likeness and let him have, God spoke these things out, people. Well, you, well we sit around, Minister Ambrose, and we say, well, God know my thoughts. Yeah, he know your thoughts, but some things you got to speak out. So he'll know your actions with your thoughts because your thoughts don't mean necessarily that's your action. Somebody yes. need to hear me tonight. There you you go. can think good all, all you want to, but until it's manifested, you are not a good person. Hello, somebody. Go ahead, Minister Mays. There you go. That's that, that, that's it right there. Yeah, we can we can sit and think, but if it ain't no if it ain't no action, it's just we're just a good thinker. Just a good thinker. That's it. But he says, he, he tells us, Pastor, in, in, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 15, he said, all this is for your, for your benefit. Amen. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow and to, and to the glory of God. He said, all this is for your benefit. Amen. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people. How, how, he's, Paul, Paul suffered. Uh, Paul suffered, but when Paul suffered, he didn't allow, like Pastor was just saying, he didn't allow him to, it didn't, it, it did, he didn't allow it to stop him from doing ministry. He didn't allow it to stop the work of God from going forward. Uh, even it, didn't, it didn't cell, even change his continue. mindset, Minister no. May. Not only did it not stop him, it didn't even alter his mindset. Period. He didn't stop. He didn't have a pity party. He didn't stop by the wayside. And, 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 and call four or five brothers. Yes, he let them know what was going on and he asked for prayer. He said, let us come together in prayer and hold each other up and, and band together because these offenses will come. Christ taught them that. But nevertheless, if it's in the will of God that we go through this, then there's a learning experience that we're going to accumulate in it. And then the benefit at the end of it is going to always be in your favor. I wish one person on this Bible class tonight can tell me something that God sent them through and it wasn't a benefit at the end. Praise God. Everything that he ever sends us through, even the negative things that we call negative was a benefit in the end. Sometimes you got to lose the game. Sometimes you got to go down to go up. But God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Satan cannot win the battle because the battle is the Lord's. It's not us that he's after. It's what God's trying to do through us. And we got to always remember that and get self out of God's way. Praise God. 
Go ahead, Minister Mays. I know I keep cutting you off. Oh, that's all right. We 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 in this thing together. We just I'm just making sure that the, that they have some understanding um, about how good we really have it. Because I don't think sometimes I don't think we understand how good we really have it, uh, even with grace. And, and so we shouldn't have an issue or a problem with extending that same thing out uh, to to somebody else. Uh, because even even God's grace, we even you know. That covers us in forgiveness and, and 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 God even we even have their future grace because he left us a Holy Spirit. He, That's he, it. Left, us, he left us, he left us confident. He said God's future grace. He says, uh, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And so we have to remember that 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 we were all it's we are always covered. Uh, we, we, we always cover it, but uh, we can go back to that illustration. That's a dynamic illustration. You know, what are we doing with it? Are we, are we choosing a hard side? Are we, are, we, are we walking in our flush like the wife was? Or, or are we going to walk in that grace? Or are we going to stand in that grace uh, that's already presented itself to us? Or are we going to walk around it? Are we going to try to make ourselves look like we're the tough person uh, and that we're doing it on our own when we know that there's nothing you can do on your own uh, so, but his wife got to the end and Minister Armbich was, was sharing that story. She was out of breath. She, so, it, it, so in other words, if, if an opportunity of ministry had presented itself, she couldn't even do it right then because she was in her flesh and you she was up. tired. She you was exhausted. Amen. Uh, so she was in Amen. herself when her husband, he had all the energy and the strength. And so when he got down to the end, he would just stand there. He could just stand there uh, because he took God's role. He took the way that God had established the good way that God had set up for us and she had taken the hard road and, and I thank God for that example because that, that's I thank God because it taught, see it. it taught me it taught me and Holy thought Minister Mays it taught me that a lot of times when we say we spiritually burned out we spiritually burned out because we're not walking in grace praise God Amen. because we're, if we walking in God he said he you just read it. he said my all sufficiency in your weakness, in my strength, my, my strength is in your weakness. So it's no such thing as a burned out believer. You burned out because you're walking in your will, not in the will of God. Praise God. And we grow in grace. Second Peter chapter three said, but, but grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if we got, if, if you can grow in grace, that means Every experience that you receive from grace should teach you more about the grace of God. Can't grow in something without experiencing it, right? Praise God. Child can't grow without, you, you don't just stay a baby all your life, you grow. And as you grow, you receive in knowledge. So it takes knowledge for you to grow, amen? Amen. Your mind expands. And when your mind don't expand, when you don't receive knowledge, then you have a deficiency. And we call that a handicap. And we got a, a bunch of handicapped believers. Somebody there ought to talk go. to me on here tonight. There you go. That have not grown in grace and the knowledge of God. You cannot have one or the other. They go together. I'm sorry, believers. They work together. We must put on the whole armor of God. And one of the things I was talking to Minister Iron Bishop about today is we want to put on what's pleasant of God, but we don't want to deal with the other things of God as well. He said, take up your cross and follow me daily. I have read the Bible from cover to cover. I ain't never seen a cross that felt good. So I don't know for the likes of me why every believer is under the interpretation, this pie in the sky theology, that everything that happened in our life is supposed to be pleasant. Praise God. He said, if you suffer with me, you reign with me. He said, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of age. He said, if they've done this to me, then they're going to do it to you. Mm. So there are certain things that we, we as believers can expect. But you read a scripture earlier about that grace that we share with others, and others are not going to receive that grace until we talk about the goodness of God. We got to show the grace of God in our life, in our conversation, and the things that God has done in our life. This is how his grace operates. 
I didn't have bread, but he was bread for me. I was sick and he delivered me. That's grace. I didn't mm -hmm. deserve it, but he stepped in. Who am I talking to? Somebody is on here tonight. My money ran out, but I didn't, I did nothing get cut off. When nobody put out doors, that's grace, y'all. I didn't deserve that. He woke me up this morning, clothed in my white mind, Joe, I didn't deserve that. But his grace stepped in. Praise God. We can't take God's goodness for granted. No. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Amen. man. That's grace. And That's grace. You know, as Pastor was saying, it, it reminded me of, again, how we go through similar situations and depending if we're going through it covered by grace or going through it on our own will, you, you can imagine at the end of that walkway, the husband was really relaxed, refreshed, ready to go to the next thing. Yes. He had to let his wife rest. She was probably fresh. Right. Slow down the A few words that wasn't. Go ahead, man. Right. But when we go through, <laughs> when we go through with grace, we go through our situations with the, with the, the fruit of the spirit is just bestowed upon us. Yes. We go through those situations, able to have love and joy, able to have, you know, peace and patience and kindness and goodness. That's how you can have situations happen and you see the person on TV, you know, say family member just got <laughs> injured or hurt or killed and their family members come on TV and they say, you know what? I forgive them. I pray for them. Yes. God to yes. cover them. Yes. Us, as opposed to us going into it with our own vengeance hours. I, I want the worst for them. I want him dead. I want him. I want God's him. children. Right. And yes. it, it, it takes that grace for you to rise to that level to still yes. want to see somebody else saved even though they despitefully used you, even though yes, they did you harm, even though they they, they, they caused you a setback. Can, can we walk in that grace? Can we walk in, under the, the mercy that God has given us? Because if we aren't able to do that, it's just no way we ever gonna learn how to extend it to somebody else. To somebody us. else, amen. We gotta extend that grace. Amen. That's how we change the world. When, pe when people do us wrong, that's what's so powerful. Like Pastor Long used to teach, you know, if, if you have an enemy, if somebody has an art against you, go buy them something nice. Not, not, nothing trivial, something that you want. Go buy it yeah. and watch how that dynamic starts to shift. We, we got we to gotta start seeing people through the lens of Christ and stop seeing them through the lens Amen. of the world. Say. That, uh, we we going to keep going through the same cycle over and over again if we don't, we don't pick it up. And, and I guess the question then is, Will you accept God's grace? Thank you. Accept Thank you. And, and it makes me think of another story that Dr. Evans had published when he, he talked about um, credit card companies. And he yeah. sent out these mass mailings. They just send them out millions <laughs> at a time to, to people. And, and, they, and they, they have this um, these amazing offers of credit, this amazing, <laughs> call it, we can call it great grace. And the recipients, you didn't apply <laughs> for the new car. You didn't, you didn't look for it. But they came right. to offer a new level of credit. But the credit card company, they freely offer this unsolicited spending <laughs> power, just like Christ does. And right. these, these companies, these gracious companies, they tell their customers that they're pre-qualified or, or they're pre-approved. And the only thing left for us to do as the customer is to just accept the offer Nothing. and then go right. spend it. Amen. Our limit has already been negotiated. And all that's <laughs> left for us to do is accept it. And by right. accepting Christ, conversely, we've accepted the terms that he's offered and we accept this pre-qualification for all the spiritual benefits and all the resources of heaven is, is just opened up to us. At our disposal. We don't accept Amen. Amen. it. Amen. Amen. We, we can accept that freely. I had someone tell me, to, tell us recently that I, I see God working in your life. I see I see what God is doing, but, but you guys have Christ to rely on. You, you believe in and, and, and I see what God is doing in your life, but that's just not for me. And this person is struggling through so many things that we Thanks, don't right. about, and we know God will deliver them from, but they won't accept Christ. The offer is just laid at the foot. You see what God is doing. You witness what God is doing. You can tell get on what board. God is doing. But get on board. Accept it for yourself. <laughs> I just don't, I don't get it. It's, it's Get on board. Get on board. Like you just said, the illustrations is all around us, and God is trying to get our minds focused and our eyes open 
uh, to what he's really trying to empower into our lives. And it's not just upon, based upon things, believers. Don't get it wrong. And when we speak about uh, the kernel things that we deal with, uh, we're not, that's not the center of our Christian belief. Carnality mm. is not what we, we strive for. We strive to be servants of God, exercising the will of God. And if we exercise the will of God, he said, and all these things shall be added. So we don't, as a believer, we're never supposed to worry about things in the first place. If we're doing the will of God, things going to find you. Mm -hmm. He already covenanted us that. That's, that's a part of the agreement. <laughs> Praise God. But I, I thank God for that. And I, it was a, a scripture that I want to tie into that. Um, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2. When we were talking about uh, the gentleness of a heart and being kind and loving uh, to one another, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 says, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bear with one another in love, bearing it with one another in love. So we have a responsibility to make sure that we're not uh, beyond being reachable to people. And one of the things we suffer in as, as the body of Christ, and it was mentioned uh, Sunday in the conclusion of my anniversary, my pastoral anniversary, that I'm a pastor that's touchable. And, um, and, and all pastors should be touchable. All believers should be touchable. If you're a believer and a pastor and you're not touchable, you're not God's servant. And I want that stated here today. Praise God. He may not be able to be reached at the time that you're trying to reach him, but he should be touchable. TDJ is touchable. Praise God. Anybody that represents the kingdom of God is a requirement of God. Even with under shepherds, that we, we take time to feed his sheep. We take time to nurture his sheep. We take time to do what's necessary. Can he be a uh, 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 pastor of all these people? God don't put no more on you than you can bear. Yes, you can be pastor of all these people. If you have to get them in groups and speak to them in groups, we have a responsibility. Because every soul that's there is important. And God requires of him and holds him accountable for every soul that's under him. Praise God. Let us not mistake that. Those that he has given us, Christ said, I have not lost one. And when Paul went about establishing churches, he left somebody to be held accountable to what they were being taught, to what they were being told, to how they develop, and God is doing the same thing. And when he comes back, he's going to hold all of us as believers accountable because there's somebody that he has preordained that you are supposed to get a word to, and he holds you accountable. We are all messengers of God, not just the preacher, not just the pastor, and not just on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Every opportunity Amen. that God gives us. And we, and my brothers and sisters, one of the things that we need to understand before I throw it back to Minister Mays, you should be able to reach somebody without just quoting scriptures. Quoting scriptures is our tool in defense and is, is, is our manifestation of the will and the work of God. But we should be able to use life principles and illustrations in our life to show the living word because Christ was the living word of God. Praise God. Every time he illustrated something, he didn't have to go to the scrolls and read from the scrolls. He taught life. And he taught the word of God by the life that he was living. How many of us can show people God through our life? And I hope the answer is all of us. That's right. Because it should be. Then we tie in word that goes along with the illustration. Minister Ambrose, he gave us two illustrations by Dr. Evans that we can tie in so many scriptures that validate that very example. That's all a metaphor is, is an example of what has been manifested. Go ahead, Minister. Yeah, so we, we, so we have to make this, we have to make it live for people and, 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 not live in a way that, you, like Pastor just said, you had to broadbeat them um, with the word. 
you can make it you can make it live right in front of their right in front of their eyes. And sometimes it's based on their experience that they have went through, or it's based on a conversation that they're having with you at that particular time. And 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 you're able to touch, you're able to reach them and to show them that that is not the way that they think. I I remember um being in a motorcycle club, there was a guy that claimed that he didn't he didn't like God. He didn't God, he was upset with God. And he mm-hmm. got into an accident. And he got into an accident. And as I was talking to him, uh, he began to tell me that how how luck had protected him through this accident. And I began to express to him that that was not luck that got mm-hmm. you through that accident. That was God that covered you in that accident. Amen. And, and, and so he didn't initially because his mind was so clouded because of his own thoughts he didn't see it as God at first, but when you have that conversation with him and, and show him just based on that conversation of talking, uh, how God had protected him. And it wasn't the first time that God had covered him uh, in an accident. Then he began to open his eyes to something different. He began to understand that. But if, if we don't have those conversations like that, you know, he wasn't in a mindset where you come in with a Bible in your hand, but you was able to have that conversation that Pastor was just talking about that you was able to reach him. And then right. you will incorporate that in because now you have his attention. You have their attention uh, based on what you have showed them uh, based right. on because God allowed things in our lives to happen so that we can understand that it was him that had did it. So we can understand the power that he has uh, around in our lives because a lot of times we, we run around and say that we have done this and we've done this and we've done that and we've done that. And the truth of the matter is we haven't done anything. It was by the grace of God that those things, that he allowed those things to happen in our life, that he allowed us to make it from that point to that point. He allowed these things to happen in our lives. And sometimes they're not always things that we want to happen. There's things that have to happen in our life for us to get that testimony, for us to be that living example, for us to be the light of that person, for us to, for us to be able to bring that person into uh, the body of Christ. And, and, and so sometimes we have to go through everything we go through in life ain't for us. Sometimes it's for somebody else. It's for somebody that's around us. Amen. Amen. So I know somebody's been, I think, I, I thank you for, for those that have been commenting. We've been reading your comments. Uh, <laughs> Sister, Sister Jackson uh, says, Sister Jackson says in the comments real quick, she says, when we fall short of God, when we fall short, God desires for us to grow, to learn and to draw close to him for right. guidance and directions. Right. And that's, and that's, what, we, that's what we are supposed to do, Sister Jackson. Amen. And, and we're supposed to uh, draw closer to God. But for the life of me, um, we see it all the time. When folks are going through, a lot of times folks will draw distance from God instead of drawing closer to God and it looks like that that because of this grace that we that 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 he have that this unmerited favor this mercy and the compassion that we will draw closer to him but it seems like that we 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 like to be uh, further apart we like to go into an island by ourselves when we're going through instead of drawing closer but it looks like that as believers that we should want to draw closer to him when we're going through our trials and tribulations, understanding that it's him that could, that'll get us through those things. Uh, but we draw further apart. You so much somebody yeah. in church, uh, they they in church every Sunday until God blesses them. Uh, they in church every Sunday, they had every prayer service, every everything until God start to bless them. You you really want to look at the mindset of sometimes uh, that we have twisted and sometimes in the body of Christ. It, it yeah. seems like when God start to bless folks. Or, or, or folks are going through something, they, they get away from God. God started to bless them with, with, they, with, with material things. And, and it's just a snapshot of little things and they can't handle it. They separate themselves from God. So why would God uh, give, you big, give you something bigger that will blow your mind because you wouldn't be able to handle it? You can't we handle, can't handle it. a little you, we, we, Yeah, we can't handle a $10 an hour job uh, because yeah. it stops us from coming to church. Yes. Yeah, and, and so so why 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 are you gonna give you a twenty five dollar an hour job because you you be a mess around and try to walk somewhere that you can't even make it to uh you you be gonna think that you can walk on the water right now 
uh, because uh, be, be, because our heads will get that big. And so we have to understand and, 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 and operate with what God have given us. And we have to continue to uh, be submissive to him, continue to be obedient to him. And, and because let, you haven't let, seen let, nothing yet. Let me throw that on the flip side as well, Minister Mays. Not just God, the, the devil offers yes. you what? Materialism. Good things. Yep. You know, you know, every every opportunity and everything that you receive is not of God. Say you did get a $30 hour job, but it's gonna take you away from your commitment to God and you spend no time with God. How is that of God? God's purpose is to draw you near, not to draw you away from him. And if material things take you away from God in order for you to enjoy the abundance of life, he said, I came. Let me let, let me lay this down. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you can't live an abundant life off of the promises of God, you can work all you want to and it ain't going to never add up. The whole premise of what Satan is doing is trying to keep you out of the will of God. And you're working yourself. I'm going back to that illustration girl gave us yeah. again. Come you're on. killing yourself trying to buy houses and lands and cars when you could have got on the same grace elevator and, <laughs> and got all these things anyway, the easy way. Because what God has for you is for you. But you can choose to get it his way or your way. I, it's a terminology in one of my uh, Christian um uh, Christian dictionary that terminates, uh, that, that uses the term Christian grace. And Christian grace is simply qualities that are intended to be a part of the Christian life. So there are things that we go through that, that deals with grace that builds up the Christian life. Qualities that he give us, that we go through, that's going to make us a better believer, that's going to make us a better Christian. Praise God. Maybe my prayer life wouldn't be where it was if I if I hadn't needed a pacemaker. Praise God. It taught me to pray a little bit more. It may be dependent on God a little bit more. Amen. Sometimes situations that we go through are necessary. If we didn't have these situations that we go through, and no man comes to God except he brings us to him, we don't find God on our own. Come on, people, let's be real. If we just had to walk through the church's door, we wouldn't have never made it through. It was some experience of life, something that transcends in our life that God spoke to our minds. And he opened that door of conversation with us and showed us the need for him in our life. And we have to in turn do the same thing for those others that's out there that's not seen with clearness in their eyes. He, when we use the terminology that he opened blinded eyes, that don't mean the person couldn't see. They're just not okay. seeing clearly. You remember the man that he healed when he opened his eyes. He said, what do you see? He said, master. He said, I see men that tall as trees. trees. That's right. <laughs> he wasn't seeing clear. And God simply told him, go down to the brook and wash your eyes. Well, some of us in the body of Christ is in the church that's still not seeing clear. So the only way we can wash our eyes is what? Through the word of God, by understanding the word of God. And to know it's not always easy to pick up the word and just understand it. We got to pick it up. We got to pray over it. We got to meditate. We got to come to, to Bible class. We got to get in the kind of discussion we in tonight where we can touch and agree on one accord. And then God's word will be revealed. And it empowers us to be better and to do better and receive better. Praise God. God never intended for you to be out there on your own. If he did, he would have made every man an island. That's right. But he did. Because we need each other. Whether we want to, uh, to admit it or not, God's purpose is that we unify and become one as he and the Father is one. Jesus constantly said that. I and the Father is one. He said, well, if how can we see the Father? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you know me, you know the Father. And we should be quoting the same thing. Well, I want to see Jesus. Well, you see Jesus. Because if you have seen me, you see Jesus. Because I am his representative. He speaks through me and to me. We're afraid to tell people that because we, in our own minds, we don't look like Christ. <laughs> Let me ask people. Ask the average believer. 
We see us, we sell ourselves short because of sin. When the thing you holding accountable to have already been paid for on Calvary, your sin's already done. If you really believe in God, they're already forgiven. All you gotta do is repent. Lord, I'm sorry. And be truthful in your in your in repentance. Because if you're really sorry about something, you don't continue to do it. And I've been there, done that. I didn't beg God's forgiveness for sins that I committed. Go right back out and do the same thing. Well, I'm going to go back and ask God to forgive me again. Go back out there, do it again. I'm going to ask God to forgive me again. And somewhere along the way, God just started talking to me. How many times are you going to ask me for forgiveness? When you're really sorry, then you ain't going to do it no more. And I thank God for that voice speaking in my ear. Because Satan, Satan could get on the other side and say, that's all right, God's a forgiving God. Just keep doing it. The more you do it, the more he's going to forgive you. But even in forgiveness, there's consequences for every sin that we commit. All right? Amen. And I don't want to pay the consequence. I want my sin blotted out. That I might be able to speak the, the truth of God to somebody else and they receive it. And my brothers and sisters, if we ever been in the word of God, now is the time for us to know what you believe and why you believe it, because you're going to be challenged. It is organizations out here in the world now that's challenging believers according to their faith. Why you believe what you believe? Prove it to me. Show it to me in the word of God. And we saying stuff that we can't even take people to the word of God, uh, uh, to a scripture that validates what we're saying. So now we're sitting out there confused. Well, the, well, the, my pastor said, okay. He said, everybody that stands behind a pulpit is, does not speak for him. That's right. In the word of God, there's wolves in sheep clothing. So we got to learn how to read for ourselves. And follow, follow as the man of God preaches the word of God. Follow along as he reads the word of God. Every scripture we gave tonight, everybody should have been following along. If you're in Bible class and you don't have a phone, you don't have a Bible, I got an old school Bible. I'm old school tonight. I'm thumbing pages. Praise God. In a little, in a little letter Bible, so I can't hardly see what I'm reading, but I'm reading it because we need to know that it's in the word of God because the only thing that's going to change us and give us that grace that gives us hope, that gives us assurance, is by knowing what the word of God says. Go ahead, Minister May. Amen. Yeah, that that that's that's true. And so what road are we taking? Are we taking our own road? Or are we taking that road of grace that's laid out for us do we want to take things hard do we want to make things hard because it doesn't make you a a, a, a bigger or a stronger person you know as some people may think take take god's way all the time god's Amen. grace god's Amen. grace he, he he did it he he laid the foundation for you that unmerited favor that that mercy that compassionate he's there it's already there for us and Amen. So, but we have to extend that same thing to people. And I think that, it, and so we have to remember, we have to extend that same thing. Uh, this, this ain't hard. It, it ain't hard. I, I'm not going to say that every day is easy, but it, it ain't hard it, because you have to operate under the, operate under grace. Uh, let God, let God lead you. Let, let God, but extend that grace to others. We should be kind to people and understand that not everybody is going to be kind back to you. Uh, but Amen. understand that that that, that that we want God to extend that grace to us, and we're not always nice to God. Amen. Say it. And we we we're we looking for God to extend that grace. Oh uh, God, I need this. I, I got you know that unmerited favor. You want it every day. Uh, but you know, we're not always nice to God. We disobedient to Him sometimes, Amen. and we're still looking for grace. And so we shouldn't have a problem extending that same grace to people, even when they don't treat you like you think they should treat you. Even when they don't talk like you talk, even when they don't act like you act, you still have a responsibility to extend that same grace into us. Uh, if we open up in our lesson bullet point says, I agree. And, yeah. and so you do, do you agree to extend grace to others? Uh, because yeah. the same grace that you're getting, the same grace 
that you're getting. Uh, you you are very you're recipient recipient of God's daily uh, kindness and mercy that you want Him to give you. He woke you up this morning uh, because of His grace. He has allowed you on your way because of His grace. You made it to work safely because it wasn't that you deserved. It wasn't that we did something that was so good yesterday that we deserved to get up this morning, but because of His grace. He allowed us to get up. And so we have to extend that same thing that we can extend to our brothers and sisters. We have to extend that same thing uh, to them. That neighbor that they don't speak to you, continue to speak to them. Speak to them anyway. That they ain't Amen. talking to you. Continue to, 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 to say hi to them. Because Amen. you know that you have done what you were required to do. Uh, because you have extended that grace to them. Uh, but they don't have to give it back to you. And he didn't say Man, that Minister, Minister to Mays, that. that's one of the things that bothered me the most, especially about believers. We always complain about people that don't speak to us. Well, you know, I'm tired of I'm tired of so-and-so. They walk by me all the time and, and they don't say nothing to me. They don't speak. You know, do you speak to them? Praise God. It doesn't matter about them speaking to you. Even if they don't speak back, continue to speak to them. Eventually, they gonna, they, it's, it's so embarrassing for a person to be evil, mean, and big, unless that's in their heart. And there's good in all of us. Amen. If you kill a person with kindness, my old folks used to say, you can kill plenty of bees with honey. Praise God. No one is going to continue to walk by you if you speak to them. They might, they might have something against you or they might not even be thinking about you. It could be something that they're going through personally. You cannot do evil for evil. We got to get out of it. Quit going through life, trying to treat people based upon the way they're treating you. And be the example. Be the example. Praise God. It makes a difference. Yes, it does. It makes a difference. If we all treated people like we were being treated, then there would be no love in the world. Because all of us got something that we can complain about, about some yeah. individual. And then when you don't do things the way people want you to do them, they hold them against you anyway. They get mad at you, they don't speak to you, you're not a man of God. You know, if I'm, as a pastor, if I don't submit to everything somebody want me to do, I'm, he ain't no good pastor. But I can't do everything according to your will, That's according right. to your command. I work for God. And so I, I got to be obedient to God. And it, does it cause some people to, to be displeased? Yes, it is. And yes, it will. But our obedience belongs to God. God. Amen. And we cannot compromise just to please people. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey Amen. So it's now 7.20. Man, I tell you, time flies. Yeah. Uh, Minister, there, Chris, do you have anything else you want to say? Right. You're sitting there and I'm looking like you got one more. <laughs> 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 one more go round. <laughs> I had to unmute. No, no, no. Thank you. I, I appreciate being allowed to participate today. Thank you. Okay, Sister, praise God. Sister Mr. Jackson. Mays, as you get ready to wrap up, we thank God for every comment. And as you comment, we were reading it. We were reading your amens. Yeah. We thank God for you tonight as you continue to, to thirst after the word of God. And just stand with us. Stand with us as we learn together. Praise God. There's nothing wrong with getting in the word of God and allowing God to give you the revelation as we grow together. Because none of us know everything. Sure. And we're simply trying to get into the word of God and allow God to empower our minds and our hearts and be more like Jesus. If we become more like Jesus, we can go out here and deal with the things that we got to deal with from day to day, deal with the enemy that's attacking us and deliver folks that God have ordained for us to deliver that's around us because they are waiting on the word from God. And the only word that they're going to receive is the word that you allow God to bring through you. So I challenge each one of us that's on here tonight, open up and let God develop in you a sense of caring, a sense of commitment, a sense of loyalty to the word of God, that when that time and opportunity comes, even if you don't have the words to say in your mind, if you open up your mouth, I guarantee you what's in you is going to come out of you and God's going to use you to be a blessing to somebody else. Praise God. God bless Amen. you tonight, Minister Mays. Awesome lesson. God bless you, Minister Armbrister.
for uh, uh, helping us get through this lesson tonight. And I challenge each one of you to continue to get on here. If it's one or two of us, continue to get on here each, each Bible class day and eat this word. Continue to let this word feed you. And you're going to find yourself, instead of walking down the airport, you're going to be riding through the airport. Praise God. Life can be easy if we do it God's way. And I have made up my mind for my brothers and sisters that's on here tonight that I'm going to live God's way because his way is the only way that we can live in and have the abundance that he, he promised us. Amen. God bless you, Minister Mazes, in your hands. Amen. And we thank you, Pastor, and thank you for all, all those. And Sister Jackson, I see you in there just typing away. In the comment section, we thank God for Wonderful you. Wonderful word, I enjoyed it. Bless you. Bless, Bless you. you. Glad to have you with us. Uh, Minister Arm Brister is now posting uh, our Givelify. Uh, so Givelify, we we asking for the support for education department, and Givelify is a way that you can give right from your cell phone. You can go to your uh, Apple Store or your Google Store, depending on what kind of phone you have, and. You can type into uh, give uh, go to Givelify and 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 download the app and go to Second Sweet Home Baptist Church and then you can go down to the Education Department on your checkpoint and then you can uh, submit uh, funds through there. You can mail uh, funds. You can mail uh, offering into the church one nine one three zero Beaconsfield, Detroit, Michigan four eight two two four. You can also bring it to the, to the House of God on Sunday mornings. Or you can also, for the members, you can put it on your tithing envelope. You can put uh, under other, you can put education department and whatever you want. And, and, and understand that there's no, there's no little bit uh, that's too small. Every, if, it's, if, it's, if it's $2 Every, that you got, uh, we, 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 we'll take it. That, that, that'll get us some printed paper, a couple pieces of printed paper. So every little bit counts and it helps us towards our goal. And I want to thank those that have, uh, have that have been stepped up and Amen. That have been, that have been doing it, that have been giving it God bless uh, you. Uh, to us and we we bless yes. you for that and 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 just thank you for being with us and continue Amen. to be with us and, and 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 you know I know on Wednesday nights you could be doing something else but I thank God that you have set your mind and heart and desire to get the word of God and that you have desire to be here with us and we thank God for that and we don't take that for granted we we're grateful that you're here with us. Now uh, remember, on this week, extend that grace to somebody that you normally Amen. haven't extended it to. Uh, Amen. Take it, go out and, and extend it to that person that you normally don't extend it to because they haven't treated you the best, but extend that grace to them. Amen. And, 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 and we'll go into a word of prayer and then we'll soon let you out of here. Uh, and remember, God, remember, we, remember, go ahead. remember tonight that that grace that we extend is not something that was earned or merited. Yeah, right. It was something that was unmerited. So don't look for somebody that's been kind to you. Don't look for somebody that done something for you. Look for somebody that was undeserving of the grace that you're trying to give. They did nothing to you, but by the will of God and the love of God that's in you, God told you to speak into that person's life and to, and to, and to bless that person in whatever way God chooses to use you and be obedient because the blessing you give is the blessing you receive. When we get into our G on giving, you're gonna see that the manifestation of seed time and harvest, it comes based upon you being obedient as a giver in order to receive. God bless you. Go ahead, Minister Mays, let Amen. us pray. Father God, we come to you right now saying thank you. Thank you for your grace. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for Jesus right now, Father God. Yes. Father God, we ask that you will bless our pastor and co-pastor, Lord, continue to strengthen them, continue to encourage them right now, Father God. We ask that you will touch the Fumby family right now, Lord, that you will uh, encourage them, that you will comfort them right now, Lord. We ask that you will touch Minister Armbridge's brother Chris right now, Lord, that you will just continue to touch his body right now, Father God, that all the tests will come back so they will know what they need to do, Lord. We act that you will touch all our first responders, all our leaders right now, those who are travel right now, every family that's here right now, every family that wanted to be here but didn't make it, Lord, for whatever reason, we act that you will cover them. Lord, protect and bless our children right now, Lord. We act that you will touch our church as a whole right now, Lord. Touch every church 
that's opening your name. Every pastor, every preacher right now, Lord, touch the man that's standing on the street corner, Lord, touch the one that's standing and sitting on a fence right now, Lord, that not sure what to do, Lord, touch their mind right now, Father God. Send somebody to them that, that can show them the right way right now. Continue to allow us to be the example for you right now, Father God. Continue to give us the protection right now, Lord. Continue to give us wisdom right now, Father God. We thank you right now for Jesus. Lord, we ask all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you tonight. Bless you. God bless you. All of you tonight, I enjoyed you tonight. Let us continue to be prayerful and pray for the yes. sick, bereaved, and less fortunate everywhere. I love you with the love of God. I look forward to seeing you with us on Sunday as we worship God. I'm and God is, God is allowing us uh, to make it through the year. We're in the month of August now. And yeah. the coronavirus, and I'm, I'm, I'll say this as we close it out tonight. The numbers are going up again, but I refuse to be defeated by the enemy. I'm going to pray and continue to pray that God holds this thing steady. And if we be obedient to the will of God, and those of you that believe in the power of prayer, let's pray that God holds this thing steady. And the stubbornness of man not continue to send us up and down a scale and bring some consistency back to our, our world that we could be able to function like normal people. God bless you, and may Amen. heaven smile upon you tonight. Good night. Good night. Amen. Good night.